this is, it's this little waterfall behind us. And if you're wondering where this is, we're in a waterfall called Pamli. And it's just outside of Dalat. So if you come to Dalat, come check it out. I mean, you got houses and everything right around us. So you're like in the middle of the city almost, but you got this cool little waterfall park slash park, you know, it's very cool. So hopefully you can hear me with this background noise. Wayne asks, is it possible to get a retirement visa from Vietnam? And the answer to that is no. The reason why the answer is no is because uh, Vietnam doesn't have a retirement visa per se. What you have to do is you actually get uh, a tourist visa and every 60 or 90 days, depending on the type of visa you get, because you can actually get 60 or 90 days. Depending on which one you get, when the 60 or 90 days are up, I'm told you can actually get like travel agencies to go renew it at immigration. If not, you'd have to actually leave the country and come back in and do it again. I've never seen anything where it says, oh, we're not going to let these people do this back to back. That's not an issue. Not like it is in Thailand. So anyway, that's what I've been told you can do, that you can renew this tourist visa up to one year, and then you're going to have to go out, get a new visa, and come back in again. Something about they put extensions on this or something. And I'll get more information about that and report back to you about it. But it's not like Thailand where they actually have a thing set up for people retired. So now having said that, if you come from America, there's actually a one year visa, but it's only good for 90 days at a time. So 90 days, you got to either leave the country or take it to a travel agency and have them have it stamped out and stamped back in every 90 days. But you can do that up to a year, then you'd get another visa. Jack asks, is the one-year Vietnam visa renewable indefinitely? That comes back to our first question, where I said that U.S. citizens can actually get one year. When he says renew indefinitely, that actually means get a new visa. I've never seen anything. Now remember, Thailand's been the focus of retirement and people trying to stay long term. Vietnam doesn't have this yet. Now, having said that, Cambodia, I used to tout Cambodia as a place that was really easy to stay long term. You would actually get a business visa, you'd get there and you'd actually extend it for one year at a time. You didn't even have to have a business. This last year, 2017, they actually cracked down on that and said, if you're going to get a business visa, we'll give it to you the first time. You can get three months out of it. But when you go to extend it, you've got to have a business. So it became very difficult to actually stay long term. I shouldn't say it became more difficult than it was before. It was a slam dunk before, not so much anymore. Also, if you're from America, there's a lot of tension between Cambodia and America because of their whole political situation and supposedly their freedom of elections and all this stuff. Well, U.S. stepped in and, and said some bad things and really pissed off the Cambodians. But anyway, as far as I know, Jack, you can renew this indefinitely. And I'm hoping I'm going to run into somebody living here long term and that I can interview and ask them how they do it. But I haven't ran into anybody yet. Everybody here is tourists. And having said that, around the lot, you see a, a, a little bit in certain areas of Westerners. And the rest are Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, and stuff like that that are coming here. But if I find a furong, I'll ask him how he stays here long term. Jim asked, I was hoping you could talk about how you handle your phone service in Vietnam. Do you roam on your Thai plan or do you put a Vietnamese SIM card in your phone upon arrival? Now and I used to buy the SIM card in the airport. But like last time we came, we bought a SIM card and then once we got to Delat, they said, no, that SIM card was only good where you were at, which was where Hanoi, I think it was, yeah, where we flew into. And so they said, no, you, this is no good. So we had to buy a new SIM card. So what I've done now, and we did it this time, is once we arrive, we go to a phone shop and we tell them what plan we want. Basically, then that night, I don't think we've made one phone call since we've been here. We would only call each other probably because we don't speak Vietnamese. But I needed it for the data plan. And I got a one month SIM card with data 
How many thousand baht? Do you know that? Do you remember? I forget what it was. It wasn't very expensive though. And they give me two gigabytes per day for the internet on that plan. And it was very cheap. So we take our Thai SIM card out and put this one in. So there you go. Nat and I are going to enjoy this waterfall, and I have another one I'm going to take her to shortly. Uh, maybe you'll even get some shots from there as well to see how pretty it is. So, hope these questions have been helpful. If you have any more, make sure to put them in the comments. See ya! Hey, gang. Well, we made a little pit stop. Just like in Thailand, you find your own little cool little coffee shops that you appreciate. And you frequent them, and it can be because you like the price, it can be because you like the, the service, it can be because you like the product that they serve. And it's interesting because, you know, just like the coffee, the iced coffee is, thank you, is different everywhere in Thailand. You go get it or a regular coffee because they use different coffee beans. So you might find one where you like the taste of the coffee, the, the, the roast or the bean or whatever you like. Because most of them, if you go and eat, drink coffee in Thailand, are fresh coffee. Same here, but coffee in Vietnam is made with robusta beans, so it's a much uh, darker taste, uh, roasted taste to it. And it's a little bit more kick as well, because there's more caffeine in robusta beans than there is on, in um, Arabic bean. Now, I drink a lot of iced coffee in Thailand, but for some reason over here, they do have iced coffee as well, but I like drinking the hot coffee. The one thing that Nat's a big fan of here, and that is almost everywhere you go, they serve hot tea. And it can be a, a regular glass with some hot tea or these little cups. And they can see they, they even have a thermos here and you can fill it up. This is a big plus because Nat doesn't drink soda. I don't drink soda. And so she's usually just drinking water. But as we go around, we're always getting these hot teas and she likes it. Sometimes we go places and I'll order a coffee. She doesn't really want to order anything because she'll just drink the tea. But we feel bad, so we order something. Good tea. Nat wants to take some home and start doing this at home as well because she likes the tea. Another cool thing about Vietnam that I don't find, I'm finding it more often in Thailand nowadays in the last three years or so, but not as plentiful as here. And that is, that is fresh juices. Everywhere here on all the menu, they have fresh juices, uh, carrot juice and guava juice and apple juice. And, and you can tell they, they have the machine there and they actually extract the juice. Now, we, we, we talked a little bit about it. Matt's carrot juice was sweet. I think they put a little sugar in that to sweeten it up, but it was really tasty. But fresh juices are a big thing here. Uh, Avocado shakes. Nat got this avocado shake here. Avocado shakes are really popular here as well. And you might be thinking, oh, avocado shake. Well, if you come from Florida or someplace where they have avocados or California, probably a fan of avocados. And the shake, they don't sweeten it up too much. Um, and they add a little bit of milk to it. And so it becomes a shake. And it's very tasty. Like I say, not real sweet. Nat got this special one. We actually found this place here where I get my coffee. And they put a scoop of coconut ice cream in it. Oh, man. So anyway, but yeah, if you're into health and stuff, you can eat healthy in Thailand. You can eat healthy in Vietnam as well. One of the things I love about the lot, and we've never been able to take advantage of it yet because we don't have a kitchen, is the fresh fruits and vegetables here. Because of the cool weather, oh, man. I see artichokes that are this big, broccoli heads that are just dark, dark green and are this big. Avocados, not the, the oily avocados like Haas avocados, which we can buy imported in Thailand now um, for a little over a dollar a piece. But they have the, the more like the Florida avocados here, but they're plentiful. Um, what else have I seen? Strawberries, um, boysen. Berry, gooseberry, something like that. And that night for us, and probably for you to retire, you're always looking for something to do. So you can go to places like this. Everybody has free Wi-Fi now, and you can sit. I feel like I'm in kindergarten now. <laughs> the kindergarten furniture. Still don't know what's up with this. Um, I have to double up on the chairs. If you're as heavy as I am, I have to put two of these chairs on top of each other and make sure that I don't have to pay for a chair when I go to leave. 
but uh, yeah, I guess it's a good exercise. It's like the squatting position, you know. But anyway, um, yeah, that's it. We were always looking for little places to stop, hang out. Doing that, I'll, you know, check the internet or something. I'll check the internet and and we'll talk and hang out and have a coffee and a shake. Really cool thing to do during the day. And these are oh, coffee shops here are more plentiful than in Thailand. They're everywhere. And you can get hot black, hot with milk, hot with sweet milk, cold over ice, you can get it all. A good price for this is about, really good price is 10,000, but a lot of places 12,000, I think it's 12,000 here. Normal places for tourists, it'll be like 20,000 for a coffee. But anyway, there you go. We got more stuff to, to talk to you about, but we just wanted to make a pit stop first, and then we're off to run some more errands and talk to you some more about stuff that's been going on. Hope you've enjoyed our little pit stop like we have. See ya. Okay, let's talk about getting around the lot. If you come here, you're going to uh, probably either use a taxi, because they don't have a lot of public transportation except the taxi. So you'll be using the taxi, and it's cheap. So that's a good option, and probably safer than renting a motorbike. If you rent a motorbike, you probably have to give up your passport. But if you do rent a motorbike, and you're from America, you'd be okay, because you're driving on the same side of the road as, as well as a couple other countries who drive on the right. But I want to talk to you about what to expect if you're driving. Expect everything. And as far as the horns are concerned, the horn is basically, to me, it's a form of making a statement that if you honk the horn, it means you're not going to stop for them. See, like I didn't honk the horn, but most people will honk the horn to show the oncoming traffic or the other drivers that you're not stopping. I hated using the horn, but I realized that by not using the horn, they're assuming that I'm going to stop because I didn't signal with the horn that I'm gonna keep going, which is usually how this works. I figured this out after a while. Now, there are exceptions to this, but, and I still don't like use a horn, so I usually will acquiesce most of the time and let other people go. Just because I don't want to use a horn and I try and be a little more courteous and avoid an accident. Because you're assuming that if you use a horn, they're going to stop. And that's not always the case. Like these two people are having a conversation, so I'm going to go around them. And I hope the, the wind's not too loud in the microphone. They'll also see, like, they moved over to the right. They don't use the turn signals very much here. So if you're, if you're thinking, okay, I'll know what's going on because I'll, I'll just pay attention to the turn signals, I'd say 80% of the people here don't even use the turn signal. So the thing about this where people say the horns are a good thing, I, I still don't agree with that because there's so much horn honking. So it's not, it's not rush hour yet, but at rush hour, you'll hear there's so many horns, I never know who's honking at who. And so it, it sort of keeps you on edge because you're assuming that every horn is, is you need to pay attention to. So it sort of will keep you on edge, or it keeps me on edge anyway. See, like that guy's honk, honk, honking, but I don't know who he's honk, honk, honking at. I wasn't even close, he wasn't even looking at me. So I just want to give you an idea. We're just going to drive around for just a few minutes here so I can give you anybody that comes and never been here before an idea of what to expect and how now I interpret a lot of this stuff, which, like I said, I'm a newbie to all this. The circles are real interesting. You just sort of weave your way around. It's great if you can go with a car. See, like if I go with these cars, see, and then you just sort of follow them around. When you 
need to make a left-hand turn like this, and there's oncoming traffic, you're just going to weave your way through as they approach. You just find a spot and slowly inch your way across, and everybody else will stop, even if it's a foreigner. <laughs> got his turn signal on, good boy. So like I said, if, if you're going to use your horn, just do so with caution, you know, use it signaling that you're going you're gonna to continue through and not stop because you honk. If they honk first, then that means they're not going to stop and you need to stop. Now this is really tame here in the lot compared to Da Nang. Da Nang is kamikaze driving. So if you're gonna try and, and either get up to speed on motorcycles here, or sometimes it's just going to a smaller city, getting a motorbike and practicing before you hit a bigger city like Da Nang, because it is just oh, over the top there. Even though I like the city a lot, Driving is, is an issue. You certainly do take your, your life in your in your hands by doing this. Okay, here's this is another circle we're gonna go up and circle around so I give you an idea again about what it's like. Because the circles are the hardest ones to negotiate, because everybody's going different directions. So here's a great example here. Now I'm not gonna use my horn. But they actually slowed down for me. That's a good thing. There you go. So that's how I drive in Vietnam. Now, one thing I mentioned before, I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate, is you're supposed to have a Vietnamese driver's license. As of now, they don't recognize any of the other countries' driver's license, even though they're supposed to recognize Thailand, because it's one of the ASEAN countries. They do not recognize Thailand's driver's license, nor do they recognize an international driver's permit at this point. They're talking about trying to recognize international driver's permit but as of now they don't so you're supposed to have a driver's license it's not going to be an issue you probably won't get stopped but if you got into an accident or something an altercation and you didn't have the license that's when it would become a big issue so keep that in mind and you can't get a driver's license here unless you have a long-term uh, like business or usually you got to have a business because the papers you got to submit show that you have a business or that you're working. And without that, I've been told by actually a, a motorcycle dealer slash rental company that you're not going to get a driver's license without those papers. So there you go. So if you're going to brave it, I wish you luck. And just be careful. Don't assume anything. And you might survive this. <laughs> anyway, life's always an adventure. And even when it comes to, comes to transportation, it's always an option. Now, there are some of these buses going around, but I don't think unless you understood uh, and could read Vietnamese language, you'd know how to get around using the buses. So to me, that's not an option. <laughs> All right, I hope it's been helpful. I'm going to go back concentrating on my driving. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know. We, Nat is not enjoying always having hot tea at every meal. They serve free tea. And that's a real bonus for Nat. She really, really enjoys that. And she's sipping hot tea over there while we're uh, making this. So we'll see how much the camera moves. We did have a problem this week with the internet. Supposedly, uh, I was told that the, the transatlantic pipeline or something broke, and so we had uh, very, very slow internet connections for a few days, but supposedly, and I, last night it seemed like it was resolved. In the West, I basically stayed inside and, and stayed to myself on my computer and stuff, and I think a lot of people are doing that and, and communicating 
through some place like Facebook, where you talk to Facebook and Facebook decides who they want to give that information to and shares it. You're not really talking people to people. Even though I'm seeing a lot of that over here as well, you, you come over here as a ripper, you don't have to have a life like that. You can go out and be socially active here, even with strangers, which isn't really socially acceptable anymore in the West. You know, you don't go up to people and, and, and say anything to strangers. I remember one of the last times I was in the United States and I had eaten something out of a health food store and it was in a display case and it was really good. So I went, went back the next day to the health food store and I was going to buy it and I saw this lady looking at what I had eaten the day before. And I said, oh, that's really good. You ought to, you ought, you ought to get that. Try it. The look that she gave me, like she was going to call 911 and had me arrested for talking to her as a stranger, like, you know, who are you? Why are you talking to me? Even though it's permeating the culture here of the social media, you don't have to have a life like that here. You can step out. When I first got over here, a lot of places didn't want you to plug in your phones and charge them and, or hang out uh, and use the thing because you know, you're using the internet and, you know, taking up space in, in cafes or restaurants or, you know, people were finding places to plug in their phone, you know, that had... Uh, plugs and but now it's all different you know they encourage you to stay in places and using it there's free internet everywhere in Thailand and Vietnam um, so if you're thinking about it, you need to have internet or 4G or something, your guest house or your hotel or anything will probably have Wi-Fi which will be pretty good but you don't have to sit in your room you can go out to the malls now um, you can go to cafes you can go to restaurants almost everybody has free Wi-Fi so that's really a cool thing but now I noticed when Matt and I were in Big C which is a department store they actually have a place when you go in the shop and uh, you can see that you can lock up your phone in this little box and it has a charging station in there and you can actually charge your phone uh, while you're shopping and then come out after shopping your phone's going to be charged up and I don't know if that's happening in the States because like I said before nobody wanted to give you the electricity and here now that's a, a bonus or a perk for business to be able to do that so I thought that was really cool um, that that's happening um, and we also see it in the airports now. Remember in the airport, there's charging stations all over now to charge up your, your phones and stuff. Well, I, I had a, a, a medical crisis uh, this week. Uh, actually, last Sunday it happened. And what happened was a filling in my wisdom teeth. I was eating food, and the filling came out. It was an epoxy filling. And... And when I bit down, Nat even heard it. She went like, what was that? And because I crunched down on it, and it's like, you know, the filling came out. So I had this big hole in my wisdom tooth, and it was on a Sunday, and I said, oh, I need to fix this thing. So I went and I found a, a dentist, and it was like the only one open. And this guy was all by himself in the office, and he filled my, my tooth for 200000 which would be about a little over 300 baht or a little over $10 or something for the filling. Of course, when you put an epoxy filling afterwards, there's an occlusion and you have to use what's called articulating paper and grind your teeth on it and they see the high spots and they grind them down. So the guy was like finished, said, okay, go. And I go, wait, yeah, it's too high. And he, oh, okay, okay. And so he's trying to hold the suction and file down my teeth and all, all by himself. And, uh, yeah, it was a nightmare. <laughs> he ended up, yeah, the tool hitting the side of my mouth. I still have a thing in my mouth where he's doing it. And finally it got to the point where he started to file down the, the good tooth above it, you know, to match the high. And I'm like, wait, wait, okay, that's fine. No worries. I'm done. And so 200,000. So I told Nat, it's like, my, this isn't good having that high tooth there. So I waited well, one day or two days uh, to find this dentist that was open across from a great place that we eat breakfast at a lot called An, An Cafe. And they have great breakfast with great coffee and baguettes and eggs and the whole thing. And I kept saying, saying to Nat when we first got here, I said, if I ever need a dentist, that looks like a great place. But we can never could find it open. It's open for these very small windows of time. And that happens in Thailand a lot, too, because a lot of doctors and dentists have clinics. But they're also working in hospitals and stuff as their main job. And then they open it up as a clinic. 
in the evening hours when they're not working at a hospital. So we, we found that place open, and I, I went in, and there was nobody in there. It turns out they just rolled up the doors. Because I'll tell you why I know that in a minute. But anyway, um, I asked them to speak English, and they put me on the phone with somebody, and I told them the, the challenge. I just had my tooth filled, but it's too high. I need it uh, filed down. And they said, okay, okay, put me back on the phone with the person. And I put them back on the phone about... They said, wait. About five minutes later, they said, okay, go upstairs. And I went up, and they had a line of, of the, the, where the dentists work. It wasn't individual cubicles, but a line of them. But I was the only one in there. And this young dentist, he put the articulating paper in and filed it down perfect, like really quick. And it was like, oh, awesome, man. That's great. So I went back down and said, how much? And they said, free. And so I looked at that and go, wow. And but when I walked back down, the whole waiting room was filled with people. So we must have just got there when they rolled up the door. Um, but yeah, free. Can you believe that? Because they had to use the, you know, the material, the articulating paper. The tools had to be recleaned and everything like that. And the doctor's time, but they didn't charge me at all. So great dentist um, that I highly recommend if you're in Dallas. Um, speaking of health and stuff, I wanted to mention, um, you know, people are always ask me what are the good things and bad things about being in different places, comparing like Vietnam and Thailand. And one of the things I wanted to mention to you all, because I noticed it the other night when Nat and I were eating, in Thailand, they've really cracked down on smoking. Uh, they've just been lately, you know, in the last few months, I've been talking about there's no smoking at the beach anymore because they didn't want people throwing the cigarette butts down in the sand because of the pollution. Of course, trash washers up on the beach every night, and they don't do anything about that, but those cigarette butts you got to watch out for. But anyway, <clears throat> so smoking, a lot of, you can't smoke in a lot of places in Thailand indoors and now outdoors as well. Um, but um, in Vietnam, there's everybody, the men smoke and everything, and it's not uncommon to be in restaurants with people smoking around you. And we were having some soup the other night, and I noticed the guy was waiting on us. He's walking around with a cigarette in his mouth while he's waiting on tables and stuff. So that's the contrast. Now, is that good or bad? Well, if you're a smoker, you're probably saying, well, that's great. I'd be able to sit and have a, a coffee and have a cigarette or something like that. And non-smokers are probably going, oh, I don't know about that. You know, so this thing about good and bad and judgment, um, same with that Facebook thing. You know, it's not good or bad. It's just the way it is. And you work around these things to match what you want and what you believe and what you feel. And so <clears throat> I just wanted to mention that, though. So last week we found out there was an apartment for rent, which turns out that uh, one of our members, he, uh, he and his mother stayed at that same place that we went and looked, but the one that we looked at, it was already uh, rented. So Nat and I have been looking around to find something that's a little longer term. If we come for three weeks, staying in a hotel is really not a good option because it's, it's expensive. So we've been asking around, looking around, driving around. We know what the sign looks like for rent, but can never find one. And so we stopped at this little coffee shop on this hill. Got a great view. And uh, there was a kid there that spoke good English. In fact, he was uh, just served the coffee here. And uh, so I asked him. I said, we're looking for a place to rent. You know any place? Now, I'm not sure if you can hear that in the microphone. It's like a planer. Anyway, he pointed to this place up the hill, that house up there. And so he said, they have rooms for rent. I wandered up there, and there were some young guys, young people who are really cool, really helpful, and they speak much better English than, than most young people of the same age group in Thailand. But anyway, I went up there, and there were some young guys there. And they're remodeling this. This was some, I don't know, maybe it was neglected or whatever and it's been bought. And they're gonna make a, a hostel out of it. Hostels are real big here. Um, I guess there's backpackers or low budget travelers that come to Vietnam a lot. So hostels are plentiful, homestays are plentiful, and um, but not apartments. Apartments are really hard to find. So anyway, um, I wandered up there, 
And the guy says, uh, well, we're just staying here for a few days, and uh, I'll call the owner for you and, and ask if they can rent a room for you all. And so he did that, and the owner came, owner or manager, I'm not sure, but she spoke really good English as well, and she said, and this is a hostel. We have multiple beds and stuff like that. You want a room, right? I said, yeah. So she showed me a room. And they're still working on it. They're not finished. She said next week they might be finished. But anyway, we're already booked for this trip anyway. But uh, she gave me a price for a month that was six million dong. And for three weeks in a hotel, almost three weeks in a hotel, it's costing me 14 million. So it's less than half for a whole month. And it's a room within the house separate room with its own separate bathroom but we have access to the kitchen it's got a little fireplace downstairs and stuff like that so that would be a great deal so next time we stay we're probably going to contact her and stay in this place and the view is incredible from the house and i asked about a motorbike and this time i'm paying 1.5 million which comes to 150 baht a day or something like that. But anyway, I can get the motorbike for half price as well. So very cool, huh? So never know what you're going to find when you're going around and, uh, and drinking coffee, right? So that's going to be our digs next time we come, hopefully. And uh, just wanted to get you up to speed. She's smiling. Why is that smiling? Because look, we have rice. Yeah, that's Hey JC here. If you like that video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel here. Also, we have another video up here you're going to be really interested in watching as well. And if you're looking for all the details of how to retire in Thailand in one place, plus a group of people to support you, check this out over here. Give it a click.